In his case, you might argue that he might need systemic treatment, but he's not, technically speaking, immunocompromised at this time, and uh, the likelihood is that, in most cases, we can see improvement of the externa with uh, topical treatment. It's best to um, be sure to use a drop that is not going to irritate um, the inner ear um, if you suspect in any way a tympanic membrane um, rupture or if there are ventilation tubes in place in the case of a child. So there are, um, there are a couple of um, formulations that are okay to put in the inner ear and you look in your book and you will see those in the table. Um, Ciprodex is fairly popular because it has both the ciprofloxacin um, uh, antibiotic as well as some topical steroid, which sounds counterintuitive. You said, gee whiz, if steroids um, reduce um, the um, body's defenses, why would you use that? Um, it's just very soothing and often is formulated into these eardrops to, just for, for pain relief. Um, so um, that is um, probably a great choice. However, of course, it, um, it's not cheap. Um, there are some cheaper formulations. Uh, Cortisporin Odic, which is an old medication, um, it does actually have a formulation with hydrochloric, uh, I'm sorry, with um, cortisone. Um, and it, um, there are formulations that are made that don't have preservative in them that you can use um, if there is a perforation or vent tubes. Very hard to get a hold of, um, so I really preserve that for people who, who um, um, need a cheaper uh, medication, but I really am convinced that they don't have a perf um, in terms of adults or they don't have vent tubes. Um, and interestingly enough, just as a side note, and I know some of you um, are, most of you are actually in the family practice program and you'll be seeing children. Um, ENT physicians very frequently when a child who has ventilation tubes in place does develop an otitis media, an acute bacterial otitis media with pus behind the eardrum, um, they will actually treat with the um, topical medications and sometimes with both topical and oral. The idea is that the topical medication can actually go right in through the vent tube opening, which, by the way, does get crusted over occasionally, um, and the, the uh, medication sometimes loosens that up. But it goes right inside and actually can topically treat without creating a lot of the resistance um, in terms of fighting other infections that the child may develop and need um, antibiotics or oral antibiotics to treat. The other trick is to be sure to dispense a little wick along with the um, prescription with, for better, for better um, application of the topical medication. I'll show you a picture of that in a second. Um, and of course, we want to be really um, careful about follow-up with anyone, but especially folks like this guy who has some chronic illness and we worry about him. Um, over the long haul, um, these things often recur. And when we get a recurrent case of otitis media, uh, external otitis media, um, even when we kind of can blame it on swimming, etc., we're really cautious to consider fungal etiology, and there are antifungal medications that would be used here. This is a referral to an ENT for me. Um, I have occasionally started off treatment um, for folks who I think have a fungal etiology, but I do want to refer them to an ENT for follow-up. This is a fairly good picture of placing an earwick into um, the ear canal. If you can appreciate how very um, teeny that ear wick is when it's placed, it's stiff and hard. It's kind of like those sponges you buy at the store that are all compressed, and then when you add water, they, they bloom up and become a full sponge. Well, that's what this is like. So it's a very thin um, piece of it's a fabric. And when it's placed in the ear canal, um, hopefully it's not too uncomfortable, but they're very stiff and hard and they are uncomfortable to place. We place them as quickly and easily as we can and then we add the eardrop on top of that and it poofs out the earwick. 
Um, the book uh, emphasizes that in a couple of days, um, the patient should return for the earwork to be removed, and uh, then they can go on to treating um, the infection with just drops at home. Um, the reason we use the earwick is because it really kind of places the medication where it belongs instead of, especially when we have a lot of swelling, um, sometimes the drops kind of clog up at the opening of the ear canal and don't really seep in. So this allows the medication to get closer to the surface of the ear canal, which is where it's needed for treatment. This is just a gentle reminder that no matter what age of patient, eardrops should be placed in an ear when the patient is horizontal or their head is horizontal. Hard to do when they're sitting up, really. It really almost has to be done lying down. Now, the other thing that I didn't really emphasize in terms of your examination of the ear, and um, especially when you're trying to look at the eardrum or the tympanic membrane, it is important to um, understand the uh, anatomy, and I think you learned this in your advanced assessment course, is that when you're examining it on an adult or putting in eardrops on an adult, you would pull on the pinna toward more in the superior aspect um, or towards the top and upward, uh, out and upwards. Um, whereas as a child, in, as in this picture, you're pulling downward um, or in the middle age, middle child, you're going to pull kind of almost directly back. And that is because of the shape of the eustachian tube. So that's just a little side note in terms of both assessment as well as placement of ear drops. As you read this description, it is clear that the treatment plan that we have put in place has not succeeded entirely. This guy is now very sick. And you can see that from both his history as well as his exam. Um, there are some further pieces of information here that give you kind of a new picture. It's just kind of a new situation because he's been on oral prednisone, prednisone for a couple of weeks. Um, and he had been trying to avoid moisture in his ears by using earplugs because he really wanted co to continue his swimming program, despite instructions which are very important to maintain um, dry ears for four to six weeks. Um, so his treatment plan hasn't really been able to be followed, um, and now he is very sick. Um, and there is um, a new finding of the left-sided facial swelling around the ear. His nodes are probably enlarged, but you probably can't feel them because they are so um, covered with swollen tissue. As a side issue, <clears throat> whenever we see a person like this who is immunosuppressed, mounting a fever, even a low-grade fever, we are very impressed. And it means that he's really got something bad going on. It is very frequent that a fellow like him might not even mount a fever. And in fact, what you might just see is a little tachycardia and, um, and then the, um, the general malaise, uh, not eating, a lot of more generalized symptoms. And this is also true for very new new infants as well, that sometimes they won't mount a strong fever. But generally speaking, um, again, these immunocompromised folks, of whom we are getting a larger and larger number because of the numbers of medications we're using to treat a lot of um, inflammatory illness. Um, so always good to kind of keep in mind and really be watchful and, and suspicious when you have a situation like this. As you read through this description, <clears throat> think in your head about the likely causative organisms that might be going on here. In terms of the usual garden variety swimmer's ear that's not fungal in origin, um, there may be mixed pathogens, but the predominant one is usually um, Staphylococcal aureus. And in this case, though, we're looking at an infection that has dug into um, the body and um, thus is um, thought to be more likely an anaerobe. And we're looking at pseudomonas. Pseudomonas is, um, is the most likely suspect in this case. Happily, <clears throat> we can see his TM. And it is gray and dull, which tells us no problem there and no otitis 
uh, acute otitis media. You and I won't be ordering any CAT scans on these patients, but this is a CAT scan of malignant otitis um, externa. And it really just kind of tells the story of how devastating this type of infection can get to be. Again, a fairly innocent, common, typical ear infection um, kind of gone amok. And so these are not going to, you're not going to be doing this CAT scan. You're going to be, of course, referring the patient to an ENT. Um, I have over the years, a couple of times, urgently referred patients over to ENT for evaluation of this condition. And naturally, they are treated with um, systemic antibiotics, usually IV. Uh, for a while and then followed very carefully and sometimes have to have <clears throat> surgical debridement of necrotic tissue um, as well. Um, so tough case is, um, again, pretty unusual, but this is a, a higher risk kind of guy. And you'll see those, um, your folks with diabetes, any folks on any immune lowering um, drugs, um, and older people, um, just, just always being alert for that. These next three slides